How much travel do you need? 120, 140, or even 160? That's what we're finding out today. Riders, welcome back to Sands Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and today we are talking about that age-old conversation how much suspension do you need? We're gonna be using it on my custom Giant e-bikes. And a massive shout out to Giant for my long-term test bikes and the support of the channel. And a massive shout out to each and every one of you riders out there. We just hit 35,000 subscribers. I'm blown away. And the last 28 days, we've had 240,000 views. So riders, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So in this video, we're gonna look at how much suspension you actually need, because every rider is different and there are loads of electric mountain bikes on the market. And I like to help, and I also hate to see people on the wrong electric mountain bike. So first up, let's look at the styles of electric mountain bikes. We've got a hardtail that generally has no suspension at the rear and between 100 and 130 mil suspension at the front. Then we've got a trail bike, which has front and back suspension and typically has suspension numbers from 125 mils in the rear up to around 155. And then we've got an enduro or a super enduro electric mountain bike. And we typically have between 155 and 180 or even 190 in the rear. So you riders are probably thinking bigger is better. Why not go for the enduro electric bike every time? Well, it is amazing, but having too much suspension can be a con. So that's what we're looking at today. And before we crack on, a massive shout out to Quadlock, the long-term sponsor at Sands Bikes. I absolutely love having my quad lock on my handlebars, answering all those important comments from you riders. And now check it out. If I run out of power, there is a new power bank that has a magnet on it and just go straight onto the case like that. And also check this out. You've got a wallet here, which is a magnet as well. So I'm absolutely loving these new accessories from quad lock. And first up hardtails, which typically have 100 to 130 mils of travel at the front and clearly no travel in the back and these are absolutely perfect for someone wanting to test the water on an electric mountain bike they're great for you know light mountain bike trails paved roads unpaved roads someone that just really wants to get out there and give it a go and they also have a lower entry point than something like these full suspended electric mountain bikes you see here I think they're great because they are starting around two to 3,000 euros and something like the Giant Fathom would be a perfect entry point for someone to test the water and just get out in those trails and ride. But I also want to mention riders, on a hardtail electric mountain bike, you do have more weight at the bottom here and the battery and the motor. Now, without having that suspension, it can be a bit harsh on the buttocks. So my tip would be, if you want to get it a little bit softer to run fatter tires so run like a 2.6 or a 2.8 clearly they'd have to be schwabies because they make the best tires in the industry but what that does is you can run a little bit lower pressure it does just give a little bit of compression in those tires making it feel a little bit like suspension making it more comfortable and now let's check out trail electric mountain bikes in my opinion the most popular segment at the moment for electric mountain bikes and it's easy to see why so typically a trail electric mountain bike starts with 120 mils of travel in the rear up to something like 155. And let's have a look at the Giant Stance E Plus, which is brand new. And that has 125 mils of travel at the rear and 140 at the front. And that's rolling on 29 wheels. That is gonna be perfect. Like that's gonna be a great stepping stone from a hard tail. So what you're gonna get is the bike is gonna be safer. The bike is gonna be more stable and it's definitely gonna be more comfortable. It's gonna be perfect for someone that does wanna ride backcountry, do a bit of exploring, do some light trails, nothing too gnarly, and also all the standard stuff you can do on a hardtail, like paved roads, unpaved roads, go and do some bit of, bit of bike packing, all that stuff. So it is a good option. And now onto the Giant Trance E Plus Zero, which I have been testing for the last 12 months. I absolutely love this bike. Long-term review is in the show notes. So the Trans E Plus has 150 mils up front and 140 in the rear, rolling on 29 wheels. And the interesting thing about the Trans E Plus Zero, the one I've been testing, it has Fox Live Valve, which is automatic suspension from Fox. And what that does is it closes down the compression and firms up the suspension when you're riding on the flat. 
and opens up the compression when you're riding on harder trails. It is really dynamic and I've really enjoyed my time on Fox Live Valve. Now I think the trance or a trail bike around 150, 140 of travel would be perfect for someone that really wants to do a bit of everything. That's kind of what a trail bike is. You can go out and ride you know, flat trails and with automatic suspension, this is gonna be great. It's gonna feel a bit more like a hardtail. You can also go out and push harder trails. You can ride enduro on this, but you do need to slow it down a little bit and the tire selection will be important for that. And also, like if you wanna take it to a bike park, you can do it, but you're definitely gonna to have to slow it down. So I think the trail bike, especially the trance, is a great all-rounder. And lucky last, enduro electric mountain bikes. We've got the giant rain here, which has 160 in the rear and 170 at the front. But typically an enduro electric mountain bike will start at around 155 in the rear up to about 180. And I'm gonna say the Giant Rain E Plus is a fantastic bike. I think it actually feels more like a super enduro, like 180, 180. Absolute beast of a bike, super capable, actually laughable capable. And if you wanna see my long-term review, again, link in the show notes. So who is an enduro electric mountain bike for? Well, it's obviously for someone that wants to go to the bike park, that wants to go out and do jumping, and wants to ride harder trails. But you might be saying, so, what's the disadvantage to a trail bike? Well, you know, like it is kind of subtle. Like if you are new to mountain biking, if you ride an enduro bike on sort of more tamer trails, you're not gonna notice that much of a difference. But if you're a seasoned rider and you have been riding a long time, a trail electric mountain bike is gonna feel more nimble, nippy and playful. And when it comes to technical climbing, I much prefer a trail bike and the Trance E Plus Zero that I've been testing with the automatic suspension is an absolute mountain goat. But on the flip side, if you take that sneaky trip to the bike park, an Enduro electric mountain bike with more suspension is gonna feel more confident, stable, and forgiving. So there you go, riders. I hope you understand a little bit more about how much suspension you actually need. So a quick recap. If you're looking to do sort of just really normal trails, paved roads, bit of backcountry, maybe riding off to the pub or the deli, something like that, a hardtail, something like the Fathom is gonna be fine. And then if you wanna do just a little bit more, a little bit more comfort, you know, a bit more support, then we could go for a softer trail bike, something like the Stance E Plus. I think that'd be perfect for Bayer. We might actually look at getting her one. I love the raw aluminum look of the top model. And then if you're looking at doing a bit of everything, I would say going for the, the Trans E Plus or a trail bike with 29ers is gonna be perfect for pretty much everyone. And then if you're looking for nasty downhills, jumps, bike parks, definitely go the Enduro bike. And riders, which one would I pick if I had to pick one? I'm very lucky that I have both right now. I'm gonna definitely say the trail bike, the Trans E Plus Zero, for the automatic suspension, the 29 wheels, 150, 140 suspension, for me, for where I ride is absolutely perfect. And I think riders, you really should be thinking about where you're gonna ride on a daily basis. Don't be buying the enduro bike because you're gonna think you're gonna go to the bike park once a year. If that's the case, I would definitely get a trail bike. You're gonna enjoy it more. And then when you go to the bike park, just rent a downhill bike instead of taking your e-bike there. Anyway, riders, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And if you had, please subscribe to the channel. It really is appreciated. And riders, you know it. Stay safe out there, and we're gonna see you next week. <music>